Hello. <laughs> Another day for me. And what I've been ruminating about this morning is a subject that that I think about so frequently. Probably this is of all the philosophical conundrums that I face in my world and in my life. This one's probably the one that I spend the most time actually thinking about and it's I'm going to title this one unity within duality because I choose to bless the yin yang of life to me it is creation itself it is the manifestation of creator spirit it is the indivisible coin it is the beauty of contrast the ninth wave from my perspective ends the age-old conflict the eternal polarization as we co-create a world of harmony between naturally occurring pairs of opposites. Every time I hear someone express the concept that we are moving beyond duality, <laughs> something inside of me goes, Arr! how can we move beyond duality when duality gives us the expression of life itself. Magnetism, electricity, and the electromagnetic forces are the basis of all, to me, of all creation. Not, not ma uh, gravity, but just electromagnetism. Everything is electromagnetic. Everything that exists above and below to me is electromagnetic everything that exists exists in as a state of matter and spirit spirit and matter it is the masculine and feminine of life itself it is naturally occurring it is creation as i said in my little blurb so why would we want to eliminate that? I guess I'm a Taoist because I certainly embrace the Chinese philosophy of yin-yang and Confucianism that broke off from or, or derived from Taoism. And this comes up again because I've been studying, as I mentioned a couple of days ago or a few days ago, I've been studying the creditor, creditors and commerce material. And I'm asking myself as I ponder that material, is creditor debtor a naturally occurring pair of opposites? I can see where Brandon comes from and how he lays the foundation that it is a spiritual adjustment that has to be made to understand what it means to be a creditor. And I can totally resonate and agree with him there. But I still have problems that creditor implies the necessity of a debtor and it stems from the Western mythologies or religions if you will of a conflict between good and evil powers of light and powers of darkness I suppose powers of light and forces of darkness <laughs> and I'm wondering what is naturally occurring is this the way that we've designed it to be on purpose and when I say we now I'm talking about our divine essence our eternal infinite essence have we devised this this game of life to be a constant drama 
a constant pitting of one side against another? Or can there be balance? As I said, from my perspective, the ninth wave is all about creating unity within the duality. It's about recognizing and honoring the differences, not eliminating them. The differences to me are a thing of absolute necessity for life itself. And I, I, I looked up again. I've done this before. I seem to do it periodically. I looked up again the meaning that people give to duality. The existence of, of pairs of opposites or existing in as two rather than one is just the way it is. It's not, it's neither good nor bad. We can label them that way and that's where the problem comes in because so many have labeled the existence of pairs of opposites to be a bad thing. And, and I think they're not thinking. They're not analyzing this. They're not feeling the unity and the beauty. They're not feeling the greatness of our Creator manifesting as both God and Goddess. They're not feeling that and knowing that, that I seem to, to know intuitively. It's the essential, the quintessential element of everything. But I don't like the idea of there having to be debtors. Certainly don't like the idea of having to be debtors. Because of ignorance. The only, the only enemy that I see in the whole world as I learn more and more and as I wrestle with these things is my own ignorance. The only thing I have to overcome is not my ego. My ego is simply my identity. It's the way that I express myself. Now I'm using a different definition that's different than some people use. Simply my present point of view. And when my present point of view is based on the ignorance that I am separate from something, I'm creating conflict. Because there is, to me, there is no separation. There cannot be separation. It is impossible from the perspective of God from the perspective of Great Spirit, from the perspective of the Creator. There's only one thing. Always has been one thing that simply expresses itself as two. And two creates three. And we have life. We have manifest life. <sighs> Why is it so important to me? Is it that I'm wanting to be right? No. Yes and no. Of course my egoic sense would like people to see this. Otherwise I wouldn't dwell on it. But what I'm really wanting is to create within me the peace that allows my opposite expressions to both be allowed without warring or trying to eliminate one of them, without a battle raging. Because war exists in our world. In fact, all the things that really do need to be eliminated, if you will, all the bad things that need to be eliminated derive from ignorance and nothing else. Ignorance meaning ignoring the other part. You can't, we cannot have the luxury of ignoring anything because it is my experience that any time I try to push something down inside of me, a negative emotion, negative feelings. I'm trying to fight my sadness, or I'm trying to fight my anger, or I'm trying to fight my fear. I'm trying to eliminate it. I'm working hard. I'm going to fake it till I make it. 
When I've tried to do that, I end up coming to the place ultimately where I realize, hey, I'm deceiving myself when I think that I've overcome fear. In this world, I'm going to experience fear because, because the polarizations of the world are still seen and still experienced. They still exist within us. As we have people philosophically, even at an unconscious level and a subconscious level, trying to eliminate the darkness. No, I don't want to eliminate the darkness. I love the darkness. It is beautiful. It is alive with potential. And it is unlimited potential that it's alive with. I don't want to eliminate that. I love the nurturing aspect of the dark. But what I do want to eliminate is my ignorance of thinking I've, my, my job is to put out the dark. As if it's something that'll go away. Well, light goes away with it. There is no light except in contrast to darkness. And that's a beautiful thing. I don't ever want that to go away. But again, coming back to the idea of debtor and creditor, I'd like every human being on the planet to see themselves as a creditor. But there's something wrong with the word itself because that to me is an unnatural, a totally unnatural pair of opposites debtor creditor totally unnatural it's something contrived it's something forced it's something created that we've experienced but it's not creation well you see what you see what i'm going through you see what i'm going through i've lived most of my life as a debtor and didn't even know it didn't even know that i had the possibility of being a creditor which is why I love those, why I love the Living Temple series. I've, go back, I've gone back and listened to some of them again because they speak so deeply to me. And I realize that we can be empowered by this knowledge. And ignorance of this knowledge continues the masquerade. Anyway, these are the things that I'm wrestling with this morning and I just thought of a whole new subject which I'm going to have to save till another time because there's information that did come out about the Bilderbergers meeting that I mentioned uh, briefly in one of my previous ones before the Bilderbergers started they, the Swiss government people from the Swiss government were trying to stop it it actually did end early and uh, some people actually fled for their lives according to reports that I have out of out of Japan from Benjamin Fulford so I mentioned that since I read his report yesterday I didn't think of that at all till this discussion so I'm not going to go into any detail because it's another whole topic but it's interesting to watch the dynamics taking place in the world as the battles that have kept us in ignorance <laughs> The battle for truth and the battle for awakening is winning. And there's evidence of it, folks. There's evidence of it. It's the ninth wave energy. It's the first time ever that the Bilderbergers conference had to end before it was finished. It could not run its course. It was thrown open by the Swiss government to the press and to the public. And boy, that's not appreciated by people that want to rule the world. But I love those people and what they've done. I'm seeing them, the Illuminati, continually in a light of appreciation, which may sound strange, but it's part of my process. It's part of my paradigm shift that continues to go on for me. So anyway, I, I, I see my 15 minutes is pretty much up. Namaste. Have a beautiful day and I love you. Thank you.